Hello and welcome to Bottle Ship with our friends the Jifflings. If you enjoy the show, please leave a review and share the podcast with your friends. And you can email us at thegiflings at gmail.com. And stay tuned to the end of the show when the Jifflings will read out some of your reviews. And now it's time for today's episode, The Pharaoh's Comb. In your world, things are important. But what about the things that aren't important anymore? Well, sometimes those things end up here, in the magical land of Dilstonia, where little creatures called the Jifflings live on their little Jiffling ship. They find these things that we throw away and fish them out of their sea so they can recycle them and put them to good use once again. And here they are now, ready to work. Eccentric young pumpkin. Ooh, I'm ever so excited. The hedge, who was a very lazy jiffling. Like, hey man, is it time for a bed yet? Miss Katie, who loves fixing things and dressy up. Sometimes I like both together. Albert, the ship's gardener. Hey, who's been in a me cabbage patch like? And Friedeline, a very sensible Jiffling who looks after everybody on the ship. Yeah, that is correct. Oh. Today on the ship, it is a lazy Sunday morning. But poor old Albert is feeling a little bit under the weather. So he has stayed nice and tucked up in bed whilst the other Jiffs have tiptoed out onto deck so as not to wake him up. Achoo. Poor Albert. He's sneezing more than a sniffly snowman in Sneeze Town. Yeah, and today is when we are supposed to measure our sunflowers to see whose has grown the most. Albert wouldn't want us to miss that. Like, totally, man. But... I don't think the sunflowers would want to be sneezed on. Oh no, they might sneeze back and then we'd all be covered in seeds. Achoo! Exactly, Pumpkin. So best to let Albert rest while you Jifflings head over towards your sunflower patch to see how much your bright yellow sunflowers have grown. So they trotted over to the garden and each tiny little Jiff stood next to their very large and carefully looked after sunflowers. So, let us commence with the measuring. Hedge, you are the first. Friedeline held up her special measuring tape next to Hedge's sunflower. But try as she might, she just couldn't reach the top. Oh, Hedge, your flower is so big, it is even higher than I can spy with my little chiffling eye. Hedge was very proud. Yeah. Next, Friedeline moved along to Miss Katie's flower. And again, she tried to reach the top with her measuring tape. But the flower was still too tall. Well, Miss Katie, it seems your flower is taller than a dinosaur at the top of a seesaw. Rawr. Miss Katie smiled. And Friedeline jiffled along the line to young Pumpkin, who was standing next to an extra tall sunflower. Yay. Well, Pumpkin, we can see immediately that this flower is the tallest of all. Like, wasn't your flower the smallest last time, ma'am? Friedeline checked her very Ooh. careful notes. Indeed, Hedge, this is correct. Pumpkin's flower was before the smallest, mm. but now it is the tallest. Mm. How did you do this, Pumpkin? Young Pumpkin twiddled his thumbs and looked around a little sheepishly. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's probably just because, uh, because of magic. Then Miss Katie jambled over to a much smaller sunflower, which was waving happily in the breeze. So if the very tall one is yours, Pumpkin, then this little one must be Albert's flower. Hmm. Well, according to my notes, that would mean that Herr Albert's flower has shrunken. Pumpkin, are you sure the tall flower is yours? Like I think, because Albert isn't here, 
You've tried to say his big sunflower is really yours. Hmm. Well, Jeffs, we'll have to wait to find out who really owns the biggest sunflower, because that sound means an object that was lost or thrown away on Earth has been caught in your net. Even poor Albert jiffled out onto the deck to help heave it in. Achoo! Well, I could do with some fresh air. <sighs> the object landed onto deck with a binkety boo. It was long and green, with lots of prongs sticking out at the side. Well, I think that's a bed that I might just lie down on right now. Achoo! Oh, poor Albert. You certainly should get a nice Jifflings rest. But then Friedeline stepped forwards, for she knew exactly what the object was. She tippy-tapped up onto the story seat, and then she began her tale. This is the Pharaoh's comb. Hey. Thousands of years ago, in a land called Egypt, there lived a very clever group of people called the Egyptians. They built great tall statues and pyramids in honor of their fantastic leader, who they called the Pharaoh. Now, the Pharaoh was very proud of his people and all the wonderful work they did, so each day, he would dress up in his fancy clothes and go out onto his balcony and wave to the crowd. Greetings, fine subjects! It is I, your great big pharaoh! Time to rejoice in my overall brilliance! And the crowd would all cheer and clap, admiring the pharaoh's greatness. Whoa, well. This made the pharaoh feel very special, but it also made him feel that he had to look his absolute best every time he waved to the crowd. Hmm. So one day he asked hey. the best hairdresser in all of Egypt to come and give him a special new haircut. Greetings, hairdresser! Can you give me the greatest royal hairdo ever? Indeed I can, my great royal leader, replied the hairdresser. By the time I'm finished, you will look hair-amazing. And so the best hairdresser in all of Egypt pulled out her special combs <laughs> and went to work on the pharaoh's hair. She combed and swished, lifted and swooshed, and then she combed some more, until the pharaoh had simply the greatest hairdo ever. Ha! Oh, fantastic! cried the pharaoh. I must be gazed upon immediately. So the pharaoh strolled out onto his balcony, and all the people clapped and cheered and remarked upon his incredible new do. Do. But as everyone cheered, the pharaoh got a little carried away with himself. That's right! I am amazing, and so is my hair. In fact, I combed it all myself, you know. <laughs> and no one helped me. You might even say I'm the hero. <laughs> well, the hairdresser overheard the pharaoh taking credit for her work. Uh. And she was not happy. I worked very hard on that hair. And now you're pretending that you did it. No! Then the hairdresser put down her special comb and walked out of the palace, refusing to comb the pharaoh's hair ever again. Well, the next morning, when the pharaoh awoke, he had no choice but to try and fix his own hair. So he picked up the comb, but no matter how he tried, he only got his hair in the big tangle. 
Ah! Then, pretty soon, he had the big pharaoh's tantrum, and he threw away the comb, wishing with all his big important heart that he had not taken credit for somebody else's hard work. And now, the pharaoh's comb is here. So we need to use it again. Maybe it could be a garden rake so that we can rake all the soil in Albert's garden whilst he's still poorly. That's very kind, Miss Katie. But then Young Pumpkin stepped forwards. Mm, I think we should lean the comb up against the tallest sunflower and it will make a perfect jiffling ladder so we can climb up to the top and measure just how tall Albert's humongous sunflower has grown. And then we can also measure my small sunflower too. Oh well done Pumpkin, that did take guts to admit that it wasn't your tall sunflower after all. <sighs> And so all the GIFs took their new comb ladder into the garden and clambered up it to measure exactly how tall the flowers had grown. Then, after a fun day of gardening, everyone told Albert a lovely bedtime story. And he found he was feeling much better now that it was finally time for bed. Good night, young pumpkin. Good night. Good night, Albert. I'll see you in the morning, Lake. Good night, Friedeline. And it is a good night. Yeah. Good night, Miss Katie. Night, night. Good night, Hedge. Hedge? Oh, I think the Hedge is asleep already. And goodbye to you too, wherever you are. Maybe next time you see a thing that you might throw away, you'll stop and see if you can use it again, just like our friends the Jifflings. And maybe the thing you use again will have a story to tell too. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to Bottle Ship. For all the parents listening, if you'd like to, you can donate to the show at patreon.com forward slash bottle ship. And as a thank you, we'll send your child a personalised audio message from the Jifflings. And for all the children listening, if you enjoyed the show, please leave a review and share the podcast with your friends. We've had some lovely reviews this week, haven't we, Jifflings? Oh yes, like this one from America. It says, Hi, my name is Cannon and I'm nine. I'm from Tennessee. My favourite Jiffling is Young Pumpkin because he is funny. Like, thank you, Canon. That is a perfect review, man. Oh, yes. And we've had this review, too, also from America. It says, Hi, Jifflings. I like listening to you when I eat my meals. My favourite is Young Pumpkin. I love school, and I can't wait to tell my friends about you. Bye, Jifflings, from George in Texas. Well, thank you very much, George. What a lovely review. Yeah, and we also want to say a great big hello to Seth in the UK. And Hartley in Rochester, Minnesota. And Ryan and Tahila in Iowa City. Thank you so much for writing to us. We really do love to hear from everybody. That's right. And if you'd like to send us an email, please send it to thegiflings at gmail.com. Also, if you like listening to stories, why not check out our sister podcast, Storytime, for children of all ages. Thanks again, and we'll bring you more exciting adventures with our friends the Jifflings very soon. Goodbye!